What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back at Fitzgerald Hyundai in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have a car that I know many of you have been waiting for, and so have I. This is the all-new, totally redesigned Hyundai Elantra N-Line. But before we get into this compact, sporty sedan, let's talk about what's going on here. So we are in the seven generations of this vehicle. It's been around for about 20 years, if you could believe that. The Elantra, that is. Now, over the years, it's changed in overall dimensions, design, technology, but boy, oh boy, did Hyundai really get something right with the Elantra Sport, especially in 2017 and 2018. Now, when they went for a refresh in 2019, it seemed that the wagon lost its wheels and everything kind of fell apart. But you know what? 2021, new model year, new redesign, and they're bringing it back. At least they're saying, we haven't seen yet, we're gonna figure out with this review, they're, they're trying to get back to the roots of that original compact, fun, sporty driving car, but also a car that you wanna look at. A car that you wanna, as you're leaving a parking lot like this one, wanna turn back and kinda just admire the lines and the styling. So what I wanna find out, did first of all, Hyundai deliver? Have they brought it back to where they were at and really kind of just brought it to another level with this end line. And also, if you're looking at price point and you're looking at performance, should you be parking one of these in your garage over a Civic Si? Let's go ahead, dive into the ceramic white Elantra end line and find out. Right off the bat, you'll see the new styling. So you're gonna have new headlight design. So happy to say, because you know what? That Dorito chip, looking triangular headlight was kind of not really working for me, but I am digging the headlight design. You have that projector style beam headlight with the LED daytime running lamps. It gives it a nice aggressive look and that's what you're gonna want out of a sportier platform of the Elantra. I like the nice angle cut, fits nicely with the grill. You work your way down lower. What you're gonna have is a functional side air curtain. The bad news is that the rest of this is fake. So I am gonna zonk it. Would have been nice if they would have put some LED fog lamps. Like think about it, put like a boomerang style LED fog lamp in there. Really give it, would have given it a nice, I think even extra look. Plus you would have all that illumination as you're going down your favorite twisty road at night. You'll see the gloss black extends out just enough. And this whole front fascia is unique to the end line. And I'm digging that, especially the way they worked the gloss black. Now, as we come across that center grill, you'll notice across the whole Elantra lineup that closer connection with the bigger brother, the Sonata. So you are gonna get a lot of gloss black. The good news is tons of functionality. There is an intercooler lurking behind all of this black gloss grill because this is a turbocharged inline four engine. You have this lower splitter that extends down. And I'm telling you, you're definitely getting a more aggressive looking Elantra. You have your N-Line badge, so yes, there will be an Elantra N, which will be their full performance version. This one is that sport. And that's why they're kind of keeping the N, but also bringing that N line because this is their performance brand. The N is their performance brand, just like AMG and Mercedes, just like STI of Subaru. The one other zonk besides those non-functional vents is the Hyundai logo. Not because of the shape, not because of the size. Shouldn't that be gloss black? You know, they, they talk about on the window sticker, all of this gloss black is unique to the end line. It would have been nice if that was gloss black as well. But as we get up onto the hood, I love the angular cuts. It seems that on the end line and definitely the end version that's coming, these angular cuts work so much better than on the standard Elantra. And I'm really digging everything that's going on because it could get a little busy if you look at the Elantra design but on this particular one, it seems to be working just right. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? We have a unique wheel and tire situation. So you have an 18 inch wheel, machine aluminum, you have the gloss black. I do like the way they make the center cap look almost like a center locking nut that you would find on a supercar, but you still have your wheel lugs all the way around. Decent looking wheel. Uh, it's got that turbine kind of spin to it. I'm not really in love with it, but I don't hate it either, so we're gonna let it slide past the zonk meter. What the good news is, you are getting larger rotors that are fully ventilated, and remember, you have a choice. Unlike the Civic Si, you have a choice between 
a manual, or this one has the seven speed DCT transmission. But if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of this setup? 235 in the width, 40 series sidewall. It's working well with the ceramic white. Now you are gonna get an end line badge. We had one up front. You're gonna get one on each fender. Tasteful, nothing too obnoxious. There's more of those angular cuts I was telling you about. But like I was saying, on this end line, it seems to just work. That lower sill extension, very similar to the Sonata end line. I love the way it flares out towards the rear. This has all been proven in, an, in a wind tunnel for that aerodynamic efficiency. You have color matched on the door handles. You have a standard size sunroof. It would be nice if, you know what I'm gonna say, if they would have blacked out the whole roof because they blacked out the shark fin antenna, but not the rest of it. So that would have been a nice touch, but you have gloss black top and bottom. Little bit of an extension with these vortex generators to clean up the air. The whole point of this is not for looks. It's to clean up the air as it comes down the side of the vehicle. You'll see more of those triangular cuts and like I said, if you just focus on one, you'd probably be like, what's going on there? But it's kind of working on this one, especially when we get to the back. Look at this aerodynamic flow off the rear pillar into the trunk. And remember, this is an actual trunk. It's meant to look like a sport back, but this is gloss black and this whole trunk rises up. I'm digging the actual trunk lid spoiler. Nice, aggressive kick up, especially with the design going on on each corner. And you can see how all those angles kind of come together. And then as we drop down, I'm also digging the taillight design, especially the way they work the outer edges all the way across. Like I said, this would have been perfect if they would have blacked out all of this badging. So I am gonna zonk the back as well, but I am digging that nice 21st century look to the Elantra name. You do have some gloss black. I'm gonna let this one slide. I'm gonna pretend I didn't even look at this fake vent. You have the nice simulated rear diffuser. Would have been cool if they would have taken the reverse lights and put it in here to illuminate the ground. And then to wrap it off, on our end line, you are gonna get a twin outlet exhaust, staggered tip, nice round cut with a aluminum finish. Classy, looking good. Let's pop the hood though and see what's powering our end line Elantra. Right, guys, time to get underneath the hood. You do have a prop rod, but the good news is well over to the passenger side. Another thing that I do like about the engine compartment, not a bunch of plastic all over the place. You do have a tasteful turbo cover that lets you know that you did go end line. I did forget a zonk on the trunk. Besides the blacked out badging, there's no end line badge on the trunk. I guess they might have ran out of end line badges over at the facilities in South Korea. But what are we looking at? You're looking at that 1.6 liter inline four turbocharged engine, 201 horsepower, 195 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a seven speed DCT or an eight speed manual, zero to 60 in about 6.7 seconds. MPGs is where you're really gonna come out on top. 28 on the city, 36 on the highway. The vehicle weighs almost right at 3,000 pounds even Stevens, and this is where the Elantra N-Line is gonna have an advantage over the Civic Si is because of that seven speed DCT transmission, which you cannot get on the Civic Si. What the Civic Si does have that this one wishes that it had is some LSD. No, not from that drug dealer down on the corner. We're talking about a limited slip differential, but why don't we fire this up and hear if that exhaust makes any sound. guys we're inside the Elantra end line I know you're at that point you're like Joe I've been thinking about going a compact performance sedan I need four-door usability I'm really liking the look of this one how much is it so MSRP for this totally redesigned Elantra end line you're looking around twenty six thousand dollars let's see what you get for the money to the door panels now the bad news is we're gonna have to zonk the top portion of the door panel hard as Plymouth Rock that the Pilgrims landed on. The good news is I do like the material in the middle of the door panel with that nice end line red stitching. Looks great. Even the way they did that top speaker grill cover looks very tasteful. The rest of it 
is going to be pretty much semi-soft materials. And then you do have a decent size door pocket for a can of soda and at least two tacos from Taco Bell. Now, when you go from the door panel to the dash, it's semi-soft, which is great. They should have put this on top of the door panel. I do like the way they brought the dark metallic gray finish all the way across. This one has an eight inch infotainment system. Now the good news is by having the eight inch infotainment system, we have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. A little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. Of course, is it a touchscreen? Yes, of course you have all your features easy to get to. I'll throw it in the reverse. There's our backup camera. You do have trajectory. It is a little uh, on the grainy side, especially for a vehicle in 2021. So I'll put it back in the park so we don't have to look at it anymore. You got your start stop button. You do have dual climate control, which is great. Heated seats, no ventilated seats, but at this price point, that's okay. Here is our shifter, one of the sexiest shifters in all of the automotive land. I love the way it's got the end badge. It almost has like an anodized red look to it with the red stitching. I'm actually gonna put it out of the way so that Lori can show the technology. We got wireless charging, phone charging. You have 12 volt and two USBs and you got a place for two Twinkies. So they got you covered. Whether you need to charge something or eat something, we'll put that back into park. You could actually hit this button and bring up the reverse camera without actually being in reverse. You have an oh crap handle for your passenger to hold on to. Two cup holders and let me show you this. You get one of these and, and this isn't actually a cup you actually can adjust the height of the cup holder. So if you have a shorter cup, you put that in there and now your cup doesn't fall in the cup holder. Let me go ahead and show you the key fob. It would have been nice to have the end badging on the key fob, but you do have all the features, including remote start. On the side over here, we have a nice little tray. Little, you're not gonna be able to put a Twinkie in there. You're gonna be able to put, the good news is not a Twinkie, but you could put a nice, large, soft, freshly baked chocolate chip cookie. Just slide it right in there. And then armrest, it's a little bit on the Rubbermaid side. Actually, it's a lot on the Rubbermaid side, so it's not very soft, but the good news is you got plenty of room in there. I would say, you know what? If, if you've been you know, working hard and saving your money, you could at least put 10 hundred grand bars in there. So that's about a million dollars worth of candy you could fit in there. You do have a good old-fashioned e-brake when you're feeling like getting the back a little squirrely uh, in a parking lot when it's snowing or something. Seats, I'm digging them. It's like a faux leather with the red stitch work. You do have the N badging in the center. Nice grippy material, especially on the bolstering. Now you do have, of course, uh, manual adjust for the passenger. I have electric assist over here and you have that standard size sunroof. But why don't you come over here because I'm telling you this steering wheel is a little piece of race car heaven. All right, guys, business time. Let's start off in the foot box. So the great news is, Hyundai does a great job with their dead pedal. Nice aluminum finish. You got an aluminum brake pedal and throttle. That's just PDI film that needs to be removed. Seat controls, like I promised, you had nice electric assist for the driver. Good news is you're getting a decent amount of bolstering, which is nice without it being too over the top. Steering wheel, a little piece of race car heaven. I love the leather, especially the way they use perforated on the sides, the red crisscross contrast stitching, the M badge, this gunmetal gray, gunmetal gray on the buttons. You do have large paddles. They are plastic, which is okay at this price point, but they are nice and large. And then there is the drive mode selector button. I do like the way they have this anodized red ring around it. You just simply push that and you're allowed to go into your different modes, whether it's normal, sport, or smart. So three separate modes kind of makes it fun that they have it over to the side. And then the dash, you're gonna have all analog except a small digital display. So you have an analog tack with that red checkered flag, analog speedometer. I like the way there's a nice large bezel around the speedometer. And then you have that digital display to the right where you could scroll through a bunch of information, which is really nice. Now, the great news is that it's all backlit LED lighting, which is great. Gonna give you a nice illumination. I got plenty of headroom. I'm six feet tall. I feel fan fantastic in here. Why don't we get into the back seat and see how your passengers are going to love this Elantra N-Line. All right, guys, back seat time. Now, the great news about this whole Elantra N-Line is that the Elantra is sitting on an all-new chassis. The car is wider. It's longer. It's giving more space no matter what trim you go with. But going with the N-Line is definitely going to keep your passengers just as happy. Now, when it comes to space, 
they're not gonna be so happy when it comes to other things. First of all, no rear seat pockets. So if you have any Twinkies on you, you're gonna to have to hold them in between your legs. Maybe you got a Bavarian pretzel and you got some mustard. You're gonna to have to put all that between your legs and we all know what happens if you squeeze your legs together. You're gonna to squirt stuff all over the place. No rear AC. Knock, knock, who's there? A bunch of hard plastic, no 12 volt, no USB, no two cans and a string, nothing. There's no way to communicate with anybody. You're gonna to have to yell out the window. That's what you're gonna to have to do. I don't have a pocket over here, but I do have lots of leg room. I like the headroom that I have. The seats are that same grippy material, and you do get a nice armrest with two cup holders. Yeah. Well, why don't we go ahead, let's get to that trunk, get that out of the way, and then we are going on throttle in this N-Line Elantra. All right, guys, time to open up the trunk. Like I said, an N-Line badge, what were they thinking? It needs to be back here. But what I do like is the way they hide the actual trunk release. You just hit right there, look at that. Open sesame, nice wide opening, deep floor, which is gonna help with those Costco runs, and you'll be able to do the 60-40 Tango split with the seats by pulling the lever. Nice to see that, let's do the test. Is there a spare? Yes, there is a spare, so it's nice to see that. If I remember correctly, Civic Si, no spare unless you wanna pay extra, so something to think about, but if you're ready, I'm ready, I got the keys. I got you on board. Let's go on throttle in the new Elantra N-Line. All right, guys, we're in the 2020 Elantra N-Line. I have it in manual shift mode. I really want to use the paddles on the back of the steering wheel for the seven-speed DCT. Downshifting, you do have a small gear indicator in the upper left-hand corner of that LED box, but on throttle, here we go. Very, very smooth shifts. You're getting a decent sound coming from the engine compartment, which is wonderful. Steering wheel has a great thickness. Get into that drive mode selector button. I think it's more of a, I don't know, of a, of a thing to just kind of say, hey, you have drive modes. You could easily put that drive mode selector right by the shifter in the center console. It's almost like a novelty. But I do like the layout of the gauges, especially with the backlit LED. I know everything is going digital display, but I think we would have to expect that from the N line, excuse me, the N, the Elantra N and not the N line. Getting to that eight inch infotainment system is easy. It is on the smaller side, which I've said this before, I'll say it again. It's kind of crazy to say that eight inches is now not big enough, but with all these new vehicles getting 10, 11, 12, 15, 48, hut, hut. I mean, it's just out of control on screen size. Seats are wonderful. And if there was just a little bit more of some softer touch materials, I think they really hit the nail on the head with bringing some of the red, I love the red trim in here. If there was just a little bit more, I think it would elevate the whole experience. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep it in manual shift mode. We do also have it in sport mode, and I really wanna feel how the power gets to the ground. Remember, we don't have a limited slip diff. There isn't any all-wheel drive option for the Elantra N-Line nor the Elantra N that is coming out. But seats feel great. I think your passengers are gonna love the extra room. I think you're gonna love the extra room on this all new platform of the Elantra N-Line. And I think it's smart. I think it's smart to have the N-Line because it helps really open up the door for many different price points rather than just kind of force feeding people into a higher trim or performance level. But on throttle, here we go. Very, very fast on the ships. Very smooth on the ships. The only thing that I noticed, especially with the seven speed DCT, is that from a dead stop, it takes a little bit of a while to get going. And it's not even so much waiting for boost. It's more like you're just waiting for the transmission to, to get into gear and start doing its thing, which is really bizarre. You do have a gear indicator in the upper left-hand corner of that LED display, which is on the far right side tells you what gear that you're in, but let's do another little bit of an acceleration test. I'm actually gonna leave it in second gear this time. On throttle, here we go. So really feels good, like chassis wise, it feels balanced. 
I really want to take this on a more twisty road or track to really push it and see where the weaknesses are. Obviously, getting efficient power to the ground is going to be one of those weaknesses without the LSD, but I do love the feel that I'm getting through the steering wheel. Nice weight to it. Doesn't feel numb, especially in mid-corner. And I'm also enjoying the throttle sensitivity. I don't think it's too much. I think they have kind of dialed it in just right for a proper amount on sport. Visibility out the back is great. Side mirrors are good. Let's go into this right-hand bend on the brakes, downshift, super smooth. On throttle, here we go. It does put a smile on your face, that's for sure. We're gonna get on the brakes and see how those larger brakes feel. On the brakes, downshift, third gear, right hand bend. So definitely as you push it, you are getting a little bit more body roll. I would like just less roll going. I wish there was a little bit more uh, dampening in the suspension, some more compression, some more rebound, or at least better compression, better rebound to really let you feel what the road is doing and not kind of fall over um, to the to the side. So that really is uh, a bit of a bummer for me. And like I said, from a dead stop, I'm zonking the experience because it's not pleasurable. It really is not. But let's see once again, brakes feel good. I really, really like the brakes. The paddles are a good size. They're in a good place, which is important. All right, guys, this time I'm gonna leave the seven speed DCT in full automatic mode to see how it behaves on throttle. But here we go, on throttle. Takes a second there. There's a good amount of wind noise just to be aware of, but on the brakes, smooth downshifts. Gripped it well. I'm not really having a lot of push. I'm also not pushing the car as hard as I would like to, but there's just something that is being lost in translation compared to a Civic Si. Now, the one thing is if you don't wanna drive manual or you don't know how to drive manual, then this kind of opens up the door for you to have a compact, sporty, performance style sedan with the Elantra N line. And then of course there will be the full blown Elantra N, but hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of what the driving experience is all about. I do like the overall ride and the way that they have the chassis and the suspension set up, it's not bouncy, it doesn't shake um, your spleen out of your body, which is good news. But it allows you to have some of that sporty handling characteristics. I just don't think that this vehicle is at the point of being something to compete on par with the Civic Si. It does price point, it has some really nice features, especially the wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and wireless charging. So I think that's really where it's gonna win out on the Civic Si in those categories. Um, plus I just think that the style really hits a chord, um, especially with the extra aero pieces that they've added. But we're gonna go ahead, get back to Fitzgerald Hyundai and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, been another great day here at Fitzgerald Hyundai. Definitely wanna thank Rob and Dave getting us access to their very first Elantra N-Line. Is it a good, competitor to the Civic Si, I really think that there are some definitely advantages going this route. I would really like to know what you think. Leave that info in the comment section comparing this to the Civic Si. It's going to be wonderful to get the Elantra N, the full-blown N version. I think it's important though to have different levels, especially to meet different price points. But if you want to keep seeing these compact performance cars on Radies Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you and the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the wonderful camera woman of the year here on YouTube, my wonderful wife, Lori. Leave her some comments and some love in that section. She's doing such a wonderful job. Thank you for your hard work, Lori. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.